Welcome to tonight's Tanya class. We are studying Tanya, the second section, called Shar Hayichud Ve'amuna, the gate of the oneness and faith in God. Uh, Perikid Aleph, chapter 11. Okay, so, um, as since Tanya is the Bible of mysticism, so every chapter in a certain way is unique, even though it's discussing the general topic of this section of the oneness of God, the faith in the oneness of God. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about something which is called, in English, and I'll so tell you after what the Hebrew is, God's language. Like for example, we speak a language, Yiddish, Hebrew, English, Spanish, Spanish, Spanish right, Portuguese, uh, Aussie language, right? All different languages we have here. Okay. Um, Arabic. <laughs> okay. So, there's something which is called God's language. What does that mean, God's language? And let's say it in Hebrew, it's called a ma'amar, ma'amarot. So when God speaks, he says a ma'amar. So like, for example, in the Torah it says, uh, vayomer elokim, and God said, vayomer. So that's a amirat, there's a dibur. So stronger speech, the psalm is a command, but let's look at the general concept of a speech that God says is called ma'amar, by Yomer, God says. Now, we know that God created the world with dibur, ma'amarot, sayings. So a ma'amar is a saying, dibur is speech, the ma'amar is a saying. So God used ten utterances, ten sayings that he used to create the world. Now. Last week we spoke about the kochot, the svirot, how even though there's ten different kochot, ten different svirot, but that's where we see it. We see chesed, we see gvura, tiferes, all the svirot, but in relation to God, it's all one. As the name of the section is called Shar Hayich Ramuna, that what? That everything is one. Now, since we said it's all one, and God, we said, created the world with Ten mamarot. So hold on. We said last week it's all one. Reference to the kochot. Now, does that rule apply to the mamarot as well? The sayings are they all one? And if they're all one, then how come God said that to be light, the heaven, the earth, the animals, and so on and so forth? If it's all one, and the answer the altar says just like last week, just like the kochot, the svirot, they're individualized for us, we see them as different ones, we call one to ten, but in relation to God, it's really all one. The same thing with Mamarot, that even though there's ten different utterances, for God it's all one. So Shah Yichud, the Yichud, the oneness still stands. Now, here comes the question, and the author clarifies this beautifully in this chapter. We're, I mean, isn't it confusing? We learned last week about ten kochot, the svirot. Now we're learning about mamarot. What's the difference between a koach and a mamar? Anybody? You want? You can give the class. Anyone, anyone volunteer? No, what's the difference between a koach and a mamar? Fine, grant you. Kochot is ten, but it's only reference to us. God, it's all one. Mamarot, it's ten, for God, it's all one. Got it. So what's the difference between kochot? For God, there's no difference. It's all one. But what's the what is it? What is the difference between a kochot and a mamar? What's the difference between a sfirah and a mamar? Okay. So anybody? Okay. Great. We have a good class. God okay. Says. What? You said God says. Okay. Does one of those mean that? I understand, but what's the, what's the difference? So the author explains beautifully as follows: a kochot. What's a koach? Like a sura. So take for example, let's use an example. One of the surot is, for, for example, chesed. Now, what does chesed mean? Chesed means the energy, the koach, the power to perform chesed. Chesed, in its energetic level, is a flow of outward energy. A flow of outward energy. And that is the source for any flow of outward energy, what's the source? Comes from chesed. So anytime you have 
a feeling or a need, or you actually express any form of giving in any way, shape, or form, the source is coming from chesed. The source is chesed. <coughs> On the other hand, take for example the sphere of gvura, restraint. Any time you're holding back, you're resisting, and again, whether it's physical, whether it's verbally, whether it's intellectually, emotionally, which, what's the source of it? Gvura. So when you're sharing, the source is chesed, right. When you're resisting, when you're holding back, when you're practicing restraint, it's gvura. Now obviously they're both important. You need sometimes chesed, you need sometimes gvura. Now, the fact is that if you have just a sphere of chesed, what do you have? And you all know the sphere of chesed, right? You have the, you have the source for the giving. Well, guess what, you, guess what you don't have? You don't have anything yet. Nothing, material, nothing, nothing yet materialized. You have like a warehouse of chesed, but where's the retail stores? There aren't it. You just have power to perform. You have the power to, to perform and to be a resource. Kind of resource. Now, in order for the chesed to materialize in a revealed way, there has to be something which is called a ma'amar. Why? Because chesed is its source. If, let's say you're full of chesed in you. You have this need to give, need to share, but you don't say anything. You don't think anything. Where does that feeling stay? Within the feeling. Within the, well, I'm talking about feelings, deeper. Within it. So in other words, the first day of creation, God created what? Light. So God said, let there be light. What happened? Light came. Mm -hmm. What's the source of that light? Is it, let me ask you a simple question. Is it chesed or is it gvura? It's chesed. Obviously it's chesed. Because okay. it's a source. It's a, it's a source, but what played out? What played out light? So why, the question is why did God say yihi or her? God should say yihi chesed. What's the answer? Because if God said, let there be chesed, there would be chesed. There would be more, th th that strong source would be there. You wouldn't have the specific energetic idea and the practical benefit of light. For example, God said, let there be water. Mayim, right? We need to have water. God created the water. What's the source of water? Chesed or gvura? Chesed. Chesed, exactly. So anytime God said, let there be X, Y, Z, whatever it may be, the source is chesed. And the energy comes from it. Energy comes from it. But from chesed, to translate to something materialistic, physical, that has a, 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 a time and space, and has all dimensions, it has to go through a channel where it transforms it into something tangible and real. So when God said, let there be light, yes, the source is chesed, but by saying, yihi ur, God created light via the source through the words of yihi ur. God said there should be water, mayim, so when God said the words, mayim, mem, yud, mem, guess what happened? From the source of chesed, created this entity which we call and we view and we name and we relate to as what? As water. Now, um, so in other words, the source is the Mida. The Mida, the Koach, the Sphira, whatever name you want to give to it, that's the source. The reality that gets created and becomes in existence, that materializes. that materializes is what is the idea of Mayim, or whatever the word that describes that creation. Now, What's important to note, what's important to note is that God's power of speech is not only more powerful than our power of speech because God is God, but it operates different than, than we speak. So for example, for example, let's say you have this need, you want to, you're in a room and it's dark and you want it to be light. So you say, let there be light. 
is light going to go? Is light going to go on? No. Now, actually, today's day and age with the motion sensors, you know, yeah. that's another story, right? But let's start before we're in the jet age, right? So if you, no, but one second. So if you say, hey, you're in a room with a bunch of guys and we're hanging out, we're having a class, a bunch of people, and you say, let there be light. What does that mean? You have this urge, right? This chesed experience. Everyone should have light. But guess what? When your speech is light going to happen? No. What has to happen is. Someone has to go to the switch and put it on. <laughs> or in modern technology, you have to have a voice activated system that when it hears the word light, the light should go on. But the point is that your speech didn't create the light. You share the feeling that you have that you want light on. And now somebody has to actualize your speech. With God, when God says, let there be light, light is created just from that speech. A whole different level of let there be in the power of speech. So the power that God has with his speech is not that he wa he's expressing and he wants it to happen and now, okay guys, let's get the tools and let's create light. No! By here, the light happens. You got it? Okay. Um, so in other words, the Mida is the source, the Dibor, the Amira, the speech, creates that specific localized and personalized energy, whether it's water, light, or whatever it may be, that God decided to create. Now, <clears throat> when God says, let there be, and again, whatever God says let there be, that's what happens. Now, what's interesting is, the Altarbi explains, that God uses thought, and speech. Like for example, let's say um, you have this chesed. We all have chesed. Not let's say. We all have chesed within us. And the chesed is like, you know, is cooking. is active. Now in order for anything to happen with your active chesed that you have within you, you know what has to happen? You have to say it or act. Before you say it, you're jumping, which is good. You're jumping. Before you say it, what has to happen? Where, where does that chesed energy have to go to first? In a human. Thought. Very good, into your thought. So if you have experience, if you have chesed, we all have chesed, but if your chesed is like primed, and where does it go to first? The first place it goes to, it has to, by default. It has to go into your thought. So the first thing you start thinking about, wow, I want to do this nice thing, whether it's for a spouse, for a child, for a parent, for a friend, or a neighbor, whatever it may be. The first place it has to go, it has to go into your thought. And it goes into the thought, it hangs out in the thought, and sometimes it ends there, and nothing happens. <laughs> so it was a chesed thought. I mean, think about it. How many times do we think about doing good things, and it, we never did it? <laughs> it happens. You need effort. What, again, the point, it ha what I'm trying to say is thought is the first, tr the first station. Now, hopefully it goes further, which we're going to talk about what happens as it goes further. further. But thought is the first station that that energy goes to. It goes into the world of thought. Now once it goes into the world of thought, it can either stop, and then basically that's the end of it. You have this chesed experience, and you have this thought, I want to buy this for that person, I want to do this for that person, I want to say this to that person, but you don't end up doing it. Or, you can take it to the next level. You can actually verbalize it. Let's say you have this chesed, experience, chesed feeling that you want to do something nice to someone. So you think about it, and then you actually give them a nice compliment. Right? You can say words of you know, gratitude, words of admiration, words. Your words are very powerful, and it's actually very comforting to a lot of people to hear kind words. And then if it goes even further, which hopefully it does, you actually do something. Whether you help them, or the, give them something, whether it's a present, whatever it may be. So in other words, the, but the source is chesed goes to the thought, and then hopefully goes to speech, and then obviously it, it, it goes into action. Now, um, so what happens is, what happens if you have this experience, you want to express your kindness, you know, you're, you're, the kindness is, is like a, a, a bubbling away, and you have this tremendous thought, you want to do something nice to somebody, and it stays there. You don't say anything to them, and you don't do anything for them. 
Welcome, welcome. What happens with that thought that you had? Does it go nowhere? What, what do you think happens with that thought? It goes into memory. You don't, have, you Me don't no. lose it. Fine, but what happens when it goes into that world of thought? And again, the goal is you should say it and do something. What happens? Well, well the mind creates an aspiration the, or a wish. Okay, okay. And with the wish, it creates an intention. Okay. A flow to do something. Okay. And then once you, once you do that, then, then it creates um, an effort. And, okay. And then you get your action. I mean, there's a, the mind okay. goes through multiple Let, steps. No, I got it. Let's go, let's go deeper. Okay. You have this chesed. We all have it within us. And sometimes, you know, the chesed is working. And all the, all the midot should work. I mean, I'm giving you an example of chesed. And you have this thought, you want to say something nice to somebody. Or you want to do something nice to the person. Now, obviously, the goal is, say it and do it. And then it comes down to reality. But why does you just have these thoughts? The reality is that these thoughts are real. And these thoughts are... Have power. Have power, exactly. Oh. And the other person actually feels those thoughts on a subconscious level. Now, because we're materialistic people and we're physical people, it's nice when something tangible comes out. But the thoughts alone create reality in your mind and in the other person's mind. You know, as you call someone, you say, you know, I was thinking about you. You say, you know, it's so funny, I was actually thinking about you. What happened? Because before you called them, you thought about them. It went quick, maybe. And as you think about them, you know what happens by them? They think about you, too. I'm sure it happened to everyone, many people here, right? You, you know, someone says, hey, you know, I was, uh, I, I'm sorry you called. I'm just thinking about you. I don't remember what it was. But guess what? It was, it was that thought that creates a reality, and again, a subconscious level. Now, so what happens is, God, when he says, a mamar, let there be light, you know what happens? There's light. light. In a real way. <laughs> When does God only thinks, thinks about light? There should be light. He doesn't say it. So, so we know light doesn't happen because God has to say it for it to be in a re real way. But what happens when God says, let there be light? You know what happens? There's light on a spiritual way. You notice in the words of Kabbalah, there's the hidden words, worlds, hidden worlds. Almond steaming, there's hidden worlds. And there's almond, there's Gaian, there's revealed worlds. So when God thinks, the feeling is there, right? The chesed, the midah is there. When God thinks, it creates a concealed world of light. It's funny, a concealed world of light. <laughs> That's interesting, huh? a concealed world of light. But what does that mean, concealed on a physical level? But there is light on a spiritual level. Like a lot of times... Um, let's say, for example, you, let's say you like, I don't know, uh, let's say you like eating and, or drinking a certain food that makes you feel good, right? Could you ever feel good without it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So in other words, you can have light where there's light in the room and you see around, and you can be in a dark room and it's light. What does it mean it's light? You have clarity. So there's different levels of what means not to be a light. There's physical light. And the spiritual light. As a matter of fact, there's times when you rather have the spiritual light than the physical light. Because you, you can have the physical light and you're spiritually in a dark place. So the thought creates real worlds in a concealed way. In a concealed way. Now, so in order for anything to happen, it goes again. From the middle to the thought, then the mamar, and then something happens. So, if you look, where's the greatest energy? Where's the greatest energy? In the source. In the source, exactly. In the source. In the middle, whether it's chesed, gavura, tiferes, whether it's intellectual uh, mida, in the middle, that's where the, all the energy is. Then it goes through. A machshava, a thought process, now it obviously trickles down. And then when it comes down to the mamar, it's so trickled down, because for every different thing that needs to be created, there's a different mamar. So the least amount of energy is where? In the mamar. In the mamar, in the utterance, in the saying, in the command. It's the least, because it's furthest away from the source. 
and it's specifically for light. It's not light and, and, and fire and you know and water and, and trees and everything at once. No, there's there's one mama at a time. Which is focused energy to create that specific reality. Now <clears throat> so one might say, hold on a second, this mama is pretty low, right? Well that was a stop. Don't think that. Because the fact is, as we mentioned already before, God's mamar, guess what? Creates. When we say something we don't create, we're delegating. Someone still has to do the creation. God's mamar has the power to actually create. Not only that, guess what? God's mamar created yours truly. Each and every one of us. Right? God said, Nasa Adam. Let's make man. You know what happened when God said that? Bingo. We're here. So think about it. Take this a step further. Again, God said, let us make man. Bingo. Who showed up? We showed up. We now, let's think who we are. In this we that God created, that was a pretty heavy package, right? What is there? Is intellect... There's emotions, or even higher, there's the will. I mean, every part of us, every part of us, up until obviously our toenails, but every single physical and spiritual part of us were created by what? By the mama of God. So therefore, so therefore, the mama that we, so to speak, call the, on the tail end of God is actually the beginning of what? Of us. So the, the mama may be on the tail end of God. For us, it created us. Now, so if that's the case, why do we give it like a cheap name? Ah, oh, it's only a mama. Because we're not calling, right? It's only a saying. Hello, you wouldn't be here if not for that mama. Right? <laughs> so why do we call just a, and the answer is because when we refer to it as a mama, we're not referring to relation to us. Relation to us, oh my gosh, without that we wouldn't be here 100%. We're saying a relation to God's sphere whether it's chesed or whatever the sphere is, that is just a mamar, a lois of God, but not in relation to us. So everything is relevant. The, in relation to God, it's just called a mamar. So God's saying, but guess what? In relation to us, don't play with that. Because we would not be here if not for that. Now, what's interesting is, and this is very, 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 very interesting, the author explains that God, again, God's infinite. God can do whatever He wants. Whatever He wants, He can do. But God chose, for whatever reason, we, don't, we know, we don't know, it's irrelevant. He chose this mama that He chose, the idea that through a saying certain things, things get created. And again, He could have done it in many different ways. He chose a structure, an important structure, of the 22 alphabets. Hebrew alphabets are 22. From Aleph to Tuft there's 22 alphabets. So God chose the 22 alphabets, and based on these 22 alphabets, that's what God uses, used, and uses to create. So for example, as we mentioned before, Ur, light. Light is made up of three letters of the 22 alphabets. Aleph, Vav, and Reish. So when God says the word, the, 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 the word, which is made up of those three letters of the 22 alphabet, boom, you have light. When God said, for example, Mayim, which is Mem, Yud, final Mem, which is three letters of the 22 alphabet, boom, you have water. And the same thing also, every single thing that God created or sub-created, all gets its life force from the Mamar, which is made up, the pieces to that puzzle is the 22 alphabets and the way it's spelled out, um, uh, whether it's you know, uh, numerically, because we spoke about uh, in other chapters, whether it's the actual letters or it's the numerical value of the letter, or if it's the way there's certain letters actually that are intertwined one from, intertwined one from, from the other. For example, God said uh, he wanted to make a stone. How did he make that? In Hebrew, how do you say a stone? Evan, Aleph, Bez, Final none. Boom. That's how you have all the stones in the world. So if you take an Evan, if you had a, mag a, a magnifying glass, and you're able to see deep within that stone, you know what you would see? You would see the Aleph, letters. Bays, <laughs> no, Very good, the letters. You would the see letters. the dancing letters. No joke. You would see the dancing letters. If you were able to see water, you would see the dancing <laughs> letters of Mayim Yudmem. And that is its life force. 
And matter of fact, if those letters for a second leave the water, there's no water. An eight, a tree. Tree is ayin sadik. So if you had a, the proper microscope, you can see in the tree the ayin sadik. Or certain things are not made up of letters, they're made up of numerical value. And a real, you know, God-fearing person, a Kabbalist, can see right into whatever it is and can see the, sp- the, the, the creation of it. Not only the letters, if you want to go deeper into it, Altura says, it's not only the letters, but it's actually the shape of the letters. In other words, for example, the Yud is a dot. And that creates a certain energy in what's created. For example, the Vav is a dot that's longer. So that actually creates, in Hebrew it's called a Hamshacha. It draws down the energy. I'm sorry, what? Huh? Connection. Connection, drawing down the energy. You have a final one, which is even a much, much longer connection, and so on and so forth. So every letter, yeah. every letter wow. is made up of not only the letter, not only the numerical value, but even the shape of the letter is what creates that reality. And matter of fact, to go even deeper, that's what it doesn't discuss in this chapter, but based on your name, based on your name, that's your spiritual DNA. And matter of fact, we all know, for example, let's say someone God's is not well, and it's seriously not well, so sometimes they'll add a name of like an angel of healing, Raphael, right? They'll add Chaim, which means life, and so on and so forth. Why? Because they want to draw in certain godly um, a mamar based on the letters, or based on the shape of the letters, to bring healing to the person. So the letters are extremely powerful, again, as you see, because it's, a, it's the mamar of God, which is based on, again, letters, based on shapes, based on numbers, and it's really, really fascinating how this creates the reality of everything in this world. And they have the power of healing, the shape of the letters. Isn't that Correct. Wonderful? Yes. So, yes? Great. So, let's see if I understand this. So God created a mamar, and that went from the unmanifest, the mamar created the manifestation. Yes, very good. And it's done through letters and numbers. Yes. To create this life force into everything. Absolutely. Yes, okay. yes. So in other words, the author of something says like this. So if you want to look backwards, right, and you, you're speaking to somebody, right, you're talking to someone, and you want to have a soul-to-soul talk. What does that mean? You want to be able to look in the person's neshama, and you want the person to be able to look in your neshama. Because normally you show up to two physical people, made out of flesh and blood. But you want to have a soul talk. Now the neshama is where? Within you. So you want to have a soul talk. How can you communicate soul to soul? Neshama to neshama. How can you do it? Telepathically. That's so true. I got it. Okay. ESP. Yes. I think that by feelings. By feelings. Okay. How to create a, a link between people? Yeah. How, does, how, does, yeah. how, can, you, how can you see into somebody's neshama? How can another person see into your neshama? Share an experience. Warmer, getting warmer, good, getting warmer, good, good. You guys are thinking, keep on thinking. Think of what we just uh, studied. One God, allow God is everything. Yeah, exactly, it's always the magic answer. Allow yeah. the light to pour out of you. Okay, that's good. You, God. Getting warmer, getting warmer, getting warmer. The light through their eyes, you know, the communication. Through their eyes, yes, because the inshallah, yes, that's good, good. Oh, I, I have to think a minute on this. Good, think. think. It's getting even warmer. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. I'm feeling it. Uh, it seems, I don't know, I'm getting thoughts between subjective and objective coming together. You know, facts and feelings coming together. Okay. So now, but, uh, here we go. Dalton says very simple. God's, let's use the analogy and then we'll bring it back to us. The source of all energy that comes from God is from where? From the kochot. Chesed, Gvurak. That's the, that's the powerhouses. All the, all, the, all the kochot, all the midot. Now, the Midot, what happens when you have all these powerhouses? The real question is, when, and this like, it's like a smorgasbord of Midot, right? Can you imagine a smorgasbord of Midot? Yeah. Not, not a, by a wedding of food. I'm talking about a smorgasbord of Midot. We all have it. God has that. We all have it. So you choose, when you walk over to the smorgasbord, you choose what you like, what excites you, and that's what you put on the plate, and then you go eat it. So the same thing also, when you walk over to, to your Midot, so what are the ones that you put on the plate, whatever you put into your thought? 
So you say, for example, you have a you have a media to say yes, let's create light, or you can say no, we're not doing anything. You choose what you're going to think about. So you say, no, I want to create, right? I want to give light. I want to give life. I want to do great things. That starts within your thought. Then what happens? It stops there. It's over. But then it continues to your speech. You go, oh, let there be light, right? Let there be life. Let there be everything. Correct? And it actually creates that reality. So I'll tell, let's look backwards. If you want to have a soul-to-soul -soul talk, you want to see what's the, the high end. Hear what the person's saying. Sit down with the person. Hear what the person has to say. Listen. Listen. Because one second, let's take it slowly. And matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why, by for bringing, right, we have a little Lachayim. Why Lachayim? Because it says that when you say Lachayim, Nichnas Yayin, take a little wine, you take, take it in, you take the wine in, but you know what gets poured out? Because everything, everything in life is in and out. So you take some wine in, you know what gets poured out? All the secrets. Right? You say, someone that drinks is more relaxed and they share. And it's okay. Nothing wrong with sharing. On the contrary, so now, when someone talks, and especially someone's like relaxed and feels you know, comfortable like a friend, so you're going to hear their speech. Now, where did the speech come from? People are blabbering. It's, I mean, that's... Oh. So the speech is based on, on their thoughts. So now, when you listen to someone talk, and you really listen, you're going to hear the thoughts. You're going to hear what they think about. Because someone that thinks positive, someone thinks about light and life and, and creating, what's going to come out of their mouth? Light, life, positivity, peace, hope, happiness, faith, etc. So now you know what's in their thoughts. But now that you know what's in their thoughts, where are the thoughts coming from? What, someone just threw in thoughts into their head? No, now you're getting a glimpse into the Neshama, into the Sphirot. Now you're going to see which of the active Sphirot. Is the active Sphirot Chesed? Or is it Gvura? Or is it maybe Tiferes? Because we don't have the power, God can do it, God can see without listening to the speech. But you say, you know, let's sit down, let's have a, co a cup of coffee, let's schmooze a little bit. And you, you hear it automatically. Oh my gosh. Right? It's either happy thoughts or not happy thoughts. It's hopeful, right? Or it's uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, giving up. It's positive or it's negative. It's peaceful or it's envy, greed, and all that stuff. You happy for someone else, right? Or not? That's words that come out. Just sit there. That's why the, the best way to really communicate is by listening. Not judgment, God forbid, but listening. Now you know what's in the person's thoughts. And then you know even deeper what's, what's, what's in their heart. What's, in, what, what's the kohot that's causing this person to tick? To, 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 uh, to tick. Now, obviously the goal is to do it to get to know the person. And then hopefully the person gets to know you, he listens to your speech. Which will give him a glimmer of your thoughts. And that will give him a glimmer of your soul. And then the souls start talking. And you know what happens? Which one do you think is going to be the dominant force at the end of the conversation? Who's going like to like what better? The one who goes the most of their thoughts. What? Who can let us better? But ultimately, if you have two people sharing their souls, right? And one is sharing all these struggles, and the other one is sharing all the positivity and hope, which one do you think is going to be, like, so to speak... Oh, the positive. Feed them most. What? The one you feed. Positive. No. Obviously, I'm saying, when you have two people yeah. sitting down, which one is going to be, like, the uh, higher energy? The positive. The positive, exactly. The positive one is going to be the higher energy. The happy one is going to be higher energy. And the other one is going to say, oh my gosh. They might have to try that. There you go. There you go. And then, and then guess what? Guess what? You don't have to create it. We have, you have your own smorgas where you can pick negative and positive. And then you say, you know, this guy figured it out. He chose to pick positive. And guess what? His whole, his thoughts are different. His speech is different. Let me try taking it, you know, let me try taking something else. And let me maybe try being more positive. And that's the way you can have an influence on each other, not uh, subconsciously almost. Just by listening, and the other person listening to you, you'll choose, you'll see what's, what's right and what's wrong. That takes training. Huh? Training. Focus. Training. Absolutely, a lot of training, a lot of focus. A lot, okay. Lot, I mean, concentration. All right, so now, let, let's, br let's bring this full circle. Let's bring this full circle. So basically what the altar teaches us, extremely important in chapter 11 of Shari Yichadimuna is as follows. First of all, God is one. 
from this oneness of God, God goes through a process, you have, as we spoke about last week, the three road, which is all one for God, goes through the thought and to the Dibur, the Mamarot, but in relation to God, all the utterances, all of them, it's all one. For us, we hear light, and we hear water, and we hear dark, we hear everything. For us, we hear it, but for God, it's really all one. Now, how do... But at the end of the day, for us, it's what, for us, it's, for us, it's, we hear all the different things. But the way we view Mamarot, so to speak, in the bottom of the la- of the ladder, that's only we view it where it's coming from God's essence. But the reality is, in relation to us, guess what Mamarot are? They're the first thing, because if not for for the Mamarot, we wouldn't be. And then the altar teaches us that God uses the Mamarot. The power that God uses is the speech. Because speech, whether it's through the 22 letters, the, the numerical values, the shape, etc., that will ultimately, that's where the source of all the Mamarot come from. And through one speech, you can see the thoughts and the emotions and the Srirot. And therefore, we have a beautiful way to see where we're feeding ourselves from. What, where are we taking our thoughts from. And obviously if we like what we hear, then that's great. Keep on doing it. Obviously if we don't like what we hear, guess what? You don't need therapy. Just change it. Just change it. Where are you taking it from? Take it. Where you, t- change where you're taking it from. Take it from the chesed. Take it from uh, t- compassion. Take it from teferis. Take it from a different mida that will cause you to have different thoughts and have different uh, uh, speech. And that literally can give you the opportunity to change your life. So over here is showing you, which is extremely profound, the process of the way we operate. We operate from our neshama through our kohot, and we have many kohot, right, left, and center. It manifests itself first in thought, then in speech. And if we want to change what we're saying, what we're hearing, you listen, you don't have to talk to someone else, you can listen to yourself too, you can sit and talk to yourself. And you'll hear, do I like what I'm saying? And if you don't like it, guess what? You don't need to go out and find new words. Just go change where the source is coming from. And this way, you can literally transform yourself in a very, very simple manner by changing the source where you're getting your thoughts from to a place which obviously is more of sourced in chesed and more in the source of light and life and giving. Your thoughts will be healthier. Your speech will be healthier, and the whole environment around you will be happier and healthier.